Hey everyone, what's the crack? Lawrence here with another Simagic product. This time, the Simagic TBRS Hydraulic Handbrake. You heard me right, let's do this. So this product came as an absolute surprise to me. Uh, they already have a handbrake that I'm reviewing currently. I've done my first impressions on that and I really like that handbrake. The handle is a little bit small on that. So I'm hoping they've addressed that in this one. Uh, this is a completely separate product. Let's see, how do we get into this box here? Completely separate product. Let's open it up here. And let's see, we've got loads more of these awesome Formula Drift stickers and some Magic stickers. Again, lovely branding on the packaging. I am a sucker for that kind of marketing. Nice big sticker here for the rig as well. And a little manual. The manual is actually quite nice. Black paper, very luxurious feel to it. Uh, shows you how to adjust it. And it's got English instructions on there as well, which is cool. Um, what's this? Does this, that that is the, Hang on a second, hang on a second. You can install the haptic on here. I'm so, like, haptic on a handbrake, that's awesome. That is cool, I can't, I don't know how that's gonna work, but uh, yeah, that's crazy, that, that's so cool. All right, I, I'm loving the innovation anyway. Let's, uh, Let's motor on here. That, that has kind of taken me by surprise a little bit. Uh, the warranty card here, typical Simagic warranty card. Actually, it's not that typical. They've kind of put a bit more effort into it. And, oh, wow, okay. They're starting to uh, improve this, this presentation of these boxes. So we have in here, we've got loads of these little, they look like springs at a glance, but we've seen this in the P1000 pedals as well. These are actually all little mini elastomer discs. So if we take this one out, we can see it's just a little disc, almost like a Lego, and they all slot into each other. And that's pretty cool. Let's throw that back in here. We've got a little Simagic kind of end stopper type thing. It's got a 3M tape on it, so I'm not sure where that goes. We've got bolts here to connect it up. USB cable, what's this? This is a, well, this is a little, uh, it looks like a cable to connect it straight into your handbrake, like an RJ cable. That's interesting. Let's take this foam out. And okay, we see, I see a lot of detail on here. Let's uh, stand up to pull this out. Oh my God, okay. All right, let's just put this, this to the side. And look at this. So we've got our little um, hydraulic fluid cylinder here. This is probably where those little elastomers go into. So this opens up by hand quite easily. A lot of turning on that. Okay, so we can see the, the little elastomer stack, the way that it's set up there. The amount of adjustment on this is gonna be crazy. We've got, how many, they've given us, over 30 of those little pucks. So an insane amount of adjustment on there. I just, I can't, can't believe how much is a, a adjustment there is. From a style, um, from an aesthetics point of view, look at the detail on this handle. It's just another step up, right? Uh, they've introduced a gray color here, which we don't see on any of their other products. We see this red, which they do have on their P2000 pedals. Uh, they also have it on the P1000 pedals and uh, at the side, this is where the interesting parts are. We've got USB. This is our uh, canvas. It, it connects into the wheelbase here. We have the PAPS and the PHPR. Now that should be for, let me see, where's the mounting point? I don't see a clear mounting, maybe that's the mounting point just here for a haptic motor. Uh, so this is an external power supply, and that is a power supply that you only get with one of those rumble motors. This looks insane. It looks heavy duty. I'm not even gonna attempt 
to well there's a little bit on that uh not even going to attempt to use that in in full force here it's only got two mounting holes at the bottom so it should be relatively easy to mount it is beautiful looking guys it's nice i would have liked to see maybe some Symagic branding, maybe just very subtle on the little cylinder here. That would have been cool. Um, it's kind of hard to tell other than on here. It's kind of hard to tell that this is a Symagic product from this side. It doesn't actually look like a Symagic product. But that's enough nonsense for me. Let's get it on the rig. Let's do some rally and some drifting and see what it's made of. So here we are in the rig. I have it installed on two little pieces of profile. I installed it next to this um, DS8X shifter from Symagic as well. And instantly I kind of have a little bit of an issue here. Uh, something just to consider if you're, um, if you're buying this. The hydraulic cylinder is on the left hand side. I like to have my handbrake on the right and my shifter here. Now if you have your shifter or your handbrake on the other side of your shifter, and if you like pulling your handbrake on the other side of the shifter, then it's not a problem. But mine, you can see they're kind of, they're facing each other. So if I want to change to sequential mode, I have to reach in there. It's a little bit awkward. It's totally doable, but it's a little bit awkward. So I just said I'd highlight that to you guys. If you're on the opposite side, uh, it's not an issue because your shifter will be on the outside. So on the right hand side, the reason I like to have my handbrake closer to the steering wheel than my shifter is because mid corner, I usually won't be shifting as much as I would be using the handbrake for an intense. And you guys will see that in a minute because I'm gonna use a drift car, intensive application of the handbrake there rather than once every, you know, 20 corners in a rally car. Cause the reality is in rally, you don't really use it that much. When you need it, you do need it. You definitely do need it. But um, in drifting, you tend to use it a lot more, especially if you're trying to follow a very specific line. So that's just one minor thing to be aware of. Um, I am still reviewing this. And of course, I'm lucky enough to have the other Symagic handbrake as well, the uh, HB1, this being the TBRS. Uh, this is over 200 euro more expensive than the HB1. Uh, now it does feel good. I mean, it's the the travel is probably... A little bit long to be honest like you have to kind of pull it quite far before it reaches I'd, I'd like if there was a way to terminate it sooner maybe there is and i just haven't found it yet but there doesn't seem to be any adjustment on uh, the arm itself i'd like it to you know terminate maybe around here so i'd like to get the full effect of those little elastomers and stuff i'd like for it to be like you know not half the travel but like maybe two-thirds of the travel again that is just me um it's a cool looking piece and of course i've got this little haptic motor on here as well uh, i took one off the pedals and i put it on here i do have them on the pedals as well at the moment and um, so we'll configure that we'll set that up in just a minute but um and I'm, I'm i have to before we say before we go any further i'm quite skeptical about having this up here because this is connected to the handbrake the handbrake is connected to profile profile is connected to the rig it's not the same as the pedals. With the pedals, the haptic motor is right behind my pedals. So I can feel that movement and I'm already a huge fan of those on the pedals. I'm not sure that this is gonna add a huge amount where it is. Now I might end up eating my words 
Uh, but just like I wouldn't mount a butt kicker there. Let's put it that way. I would put a butt kicker as close to my seat or as close to my pedals as possible. I wouldn't mount it over here or on a shifter or whatever. Again, I might be completely, completely wrong. Uh, and we might set it up for certain effects that it will get the most out of it. I'll go through all that because I can kind of predict which way that's going to go. But we'll go through all that. So we'll load up the Symagic software. Uh, in the Symagic software, we can see it. So it, it did a little update. Uh, I've just cut that out because it's not very interesting. It just does a little update progress indicator and it recognized the handbrake straight away. I can't double click on it here. I have to go to devices and then we're actually already on the handbrake um, page here. Uh, you've got all the usual stuff that you have with a pedal. So you have the, uh, the graphs and stuff. We'll go into a little bit of detail on that in just a moment. Um, you can see the Symagic software is a little bit slow. So if I pull that really fast, you can see it's slow to register. That is just the software. It is not slow to register in game. Everything in game happens in like instantaneously. So that's all good. Absolutely no issues. It looks to be calibrated quite well. So I'm hitting 100 right about here. There is a little bit of extra travel. But you might find that every now and then it'll it'll give you 1% or whatever. We can go calibrate here, start calibration, and just do a very basic calibration. Finish, and then it should be absolutely perfect. Uh, these things in, when they travel, when they're, when you take them out of the box, it's just a good idea to calibrate them. You see it took like all of five seconds there. So um, nothing, nothing major to report there. Uh, for the handbrake feel, it all depends on what you want. Some people like this type of handbrake feel where you get a lot more bite earlier on and the last bit kind of tapers off. That kind of probably fits with what I said about the travel of the handbrake. Um, I think the travel is quite long, so this one would suit me. Um, I think that um, there are arguments for, like if, if you have a system with maybe a little bit of air in it or whatever, uh, I've had this in the past with hydraulic handbrakes, where it doesn't lock, lock up until you're like almost full on the uh, on the, um, the 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 stop of the handbrake, as in full at 100%. And you've got different curves as well. To be honest, I always leave it as, as linear. Same with pedals. I just, I like a linear, I, maybe it's just what I'm used to. I like uh, the linearity, but I do love the option of having it as well. We have a tab here for feedback. And the feedback, you can do rear wheel lock. Or you can do, uh, well, that's it. You can actually only do real, real lock. Now, this software, the Symagic software is pretty limited. Same with the pedals. If we just have a quick glance at the pedals here, and if we look at the haptic feedback, you can either do ABS, traction control, or clutch. There is no kind of in between. So I use Symagic, and for the purposes of this first impressions video, I'm gonna skip the Symagic software because Feeling the lockups might give you a little bit of immersion, but I think there's more value to be gotten from this. And I'll go through that in just a moment. Uh, so I'm just going to ignore this feedback. This is turned off, which is fine. Uh, you can test it in here and you can see how, how powerful it is when you put it at 100. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it's, it is pretty powerful. Uh, you could, if you turn down that frequency, it gets even crazier. So I don't know if you can hear that, but that's like waking the house right now. So um, yeah, the, the lower that frequency, the more it pumps. These things are extremely, extremely potent. We'll, we'll go, for that in, uh, go through that in a minute. That's about it from the software side of things for SimPro. Let's jump into SimHub and configure this thing. So in the SimHub software, we're gonna go to the uh, Shake It Motors. Uh, yeah, that's the one. Uh, and you can see I've got my pedals already set up here. You can see some of my pedal effects that I have turned on, these little orange bars. Uh, we're not looking at the pedal effects for now, so let's just put them away. We're looking at the Symagic TBRS. So uh, in here, we can test it. We can see it's ending. We've got the same kind of hertz thing that we have in, uh, in SimHub, uh, or sorry, in the uh, SimPro software. So if we put that lower, it makes a lot more noise. So I'm just gonna keep it nice and civil for now. Um, the higher this frequency, it only goes up to 50. The higher it is, the less intrusive it is. If you really want this to, thing to bang, um, to, to make a massive kind of a, a thud, lower that frequency, it, it gets wild. Um, you can set it here uh, to be only when pressed, it seems. 
Uh, oh, you can do that with this P2000 pet. Maybe that's a recent software update. Uh, but you can, um, yes, you can set it so that it only displays frequencies when it's pressed. So that makes a little bit more sense. So while you're holding it, you might want to feel that it's locking up. Now, do you always want it? It's like the, the, the goal would be, I guess it won't be locked up fully straight away. So you pull it, then it locks up, then it'll start. So you might know the point at which it's locking up. Um, so it, it could be very useful to have just that feature. I think there will, I think there's more to it because there's, there's a good kind of, uh, um, there's good power off it. So I would like to, let's go and set up some of these. Um, I never set up like simulated road texture and all that stuff. Uh, let's go for gear shift. I think gear shift, any haptic motors on your device should always be like gear shift should be on and um, gear grinding on as well if the game supports it. Mist gear, put that one on as well. Road impacts, road rumble, I don't do any of those. Road vibration, no thanks. RPMs, no. Speed, no. Curving, no. None of that. Uh, you can choose traction control, traction loss. Uh, the one that I am interested in, here we go. Wheel spin and lock. So whenever it spins and locks, I want this to vibrate. So I'm actually going to drop it down to like 35 hertz. Uh, this should now, and it's at 100% here. This should now, when I go to the effects profile, it should also, now my pedals are going to go as well. But I feel, I feel this motor as well. It's not as powerful as my pedals, it seems. Let me just uh, drop the frequency slightly. And let's go back to the effects profile here. That's on 100. Okay, this is on 65, so. That feels really like potent. So when you change gear, you'll feel a little bit of this vibration over here by the gearbox. So I like that. Uh, missed gear as well. Uh, and of course, your uh, wheel spin and lock as well. So uh, that one, hopefully. Oh my God. Jesus. Okay, uh, that is very, very intense. I need to turn that one way down. Because that is, uh, yeah, that's, that one's, that one's kind of crazy. Uh, turning that down to about 50. All right, that's a lot better, a lot better. Okay, cool. So uh, that much is done. Um, that's kind of my basic, the way I would set it up initially. Uh, we can always, you know, change it. Uh, at a later stage, but that's kind of, I don't want to bore you guys with the details. So that's the way I'll set up SimHub for now. Uh, I'm not really too interested in this. I'm more interested in how the handbrake performs. So let's grab a drift car. Let's take it out on track and see how it performs. Right, so let's give this a go. Just getting a feel for the effects. Ooh, that brake is... Brake doesn't like, uh, brake is probably just a little bit intense. There's a lot of rumbling going on. I'm not feeling much rumbling. Maybe for drift, because I have it set up for track racing. So, uh, maybe I don't want too many of those effects on. I'm not feeling much coming off the, uh, not really feeling too much of the haptic. Uh, maybe it's just my settings. Not feeling too much when I'm uh, pulling that handbrake. Do you know what? I'm going to turn off the pedals for a second. Because I have those already kind of set up for the way that I like to do it. So let me grab the motor's output. And let me just turn off these pedals. So that we can concentrate on just the... Alright, I do feel some rumbling i have yeah i felt it on the wheel lock there so i have uh, butt kickers on the yeah it was quite nice there i have butt kickers on the rig as well they're already switched off so i've switched off the amplifiers for those just using the handbrake a lot here do you know one good way to use the handbrake and do you know what I've, I've only just started driving and it already feels quite intuitive, so that's good. One good way to really test your handbrake 
Um, now this is, you know, if, if it's a good way to test your drifting skills as well, but it requires a lot of handbrake. Is you see the way this road has two lanes in it? If I try to just drift one of these lanes, uh, that should hopefully be a good test. I should uh, like use the handbrake to position in combination with the clutch as well. So let's give that a go. Need a bit more power, clutch kick it. A bit more handbrake to bring it out to the out of the, the corner here. We're gonna go right to the edge here. Don't wanna carry too much speed. Rotate the car nicely. So you can see intensive use of the handbrake, he says as he messes it up. Intensive use of the handbrake, but it's it's quite accurate. The positioning is quite nice, so the length of the handle is quite good. So that's working. A bit of understeer there. So that's all working quite well for me. I haven't drifted with all of this equipment yet. Let's do a big entry here. On the left lane. Oh, it took the barrier. Like, so as for the handbrake, it feels quite realistic. Um, the main thing going on in my head and the thing that I'm going to have to determine over the coming you know, weeks and months is, is this thing worth 200 euro more than the TB, uh, sorry, the, the HB, HB1 from Simagic, which I think is actually a very good handbrake. It, I think it's, it's a relatively good value. This is like twice the price. It does have hydraulic. People like hydraulic things. In sim racing, do we need hydraulic? I'm not, a, I'm not the biggest hydraulics fan, so I don't know if we actually need it, to be honest. Um, I don't know if we need hydraulic. It does look really good. The handle is better than the TB, uh, the HB1. Uh, so it's a, it, a little bit of, there's a little bit of sponge in the handle. And it just feel it does feel nicer quality. The handle on the uh, HB1 is a lot smaller, so uh, that's something to be aware of. Um, right now, my gut is telling me that, like the, the the feel is quite good. I have to play around with the elastomers that they that come with it, uh, but the feel it does feel quite good. I think the travel is kind of a little bit of a thing for me. Um, I I'd like if I. I'd like if the travel wasn't as long. Maybe it's because of the length of the handle. It seems like longer travel. I don't know. I think that might just be it. Um, I do feel a bit of that haptic. It, to be fair, it is resonating through the rig, which is... It, it, it's doing a lot better than I expected. The, the thing with the, the ones on the pedals, if you don't have your feet on the pedals, they make lots of noise. This one isn't making lots of noise. I guess it's not, it's not on a, a, a loose or pivoting point, so maybe there's less to vibrate, but I do feel it through the rig. So that's a little bit surprising. It's better than I expected. Would I spend the money on a haptic for the handbrake? Only time will tell, uh, but so far so good. Uh, it feels very authentic. If you want an authentic handbrake experience, and take it from me, I've owned real-life drift cars, I've owned road cars with hydraulic handbrakes in them, I've driven lots of drift cars, uh, I have been in rally cars, haven't, have never driven a rally car. Um, I parked a rally car once, but you wouldn't be pulling the handbrake. Um, so, you're... I, I, I don't know exactly, but a hydraulic handbrake is a hydraulic handbrake, right? Um, so I have plenty of experience with hydraulic handbrakes. This feels pretty authentic. So, first impressions are done. I didn't have to drive with it for long. It's not a very complicated device. Um, the thing about the travel, the price I think needs to be talked about. Yes, it does feel authentic. It is $450, there or thereabouts. The TB1, HB1, TB1. It's a TB1. Have I been calling it a HB1? I've been calling it a HB1. It's a TB1. Is $200 cheaper, 200 euro cheaper than this. So that's like half the price. Is this twice as good? No, definitely, definitively, no way. Not a hope. 
has a better handle. It has, and this is just my first impressions, right? This might change over time. I'm not 100% sure. Better handle, the travel, the price. The haptic is pretty cool. Um, I think that's going to grow on me. I wouldn't buy it. Like my gut would say, knowing what I know about haptics, I wouldn't buy it. It's cool to have it there. If you're going for all the bells and whistles, go for it. It's cool to have. Nobody else has it. Um, so that's cool. The fitment with the DS8, uh, DS8X, um, that the controls are, now that's just my configuration. But this is a JDM configuration. If you're drifting, a lot of the time your shifter will be on the left. Your handbrake will be on the left. Your handbrake will be on the steering wheel side of the shifter. Personal preference will change that. This is not a blocker. It's not a deal breaker. It's just not beautiful. It doesn't look. It's it's not. If they if these were the other way around, it would look a lot better. But I prefer the handbrake to be close to the steering wheel because you use the handbrake mid corner to make those adjustments. So you need to be close to the steering wheel so that you can grab the handbrake really quickly. You're not going to be doing that with the gear shifter. Generally, when you're in the corner and you've slowed down for the corner, you're already in the right gear for that corner. So that it doesn't need to be too close to the steering wheel. So um, this is me just kind of thinking out loud and what I'm feeling about this. It is a it's a beautiful piece. Um, and it's as far as high end because this is a high end handbrake. Let's call a spade a spade. Four hundred and fifty dollars or four hundred and fifty euro, less than five hundred euro. I think it's still a decent price. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I maybe I'm just desensitized to it these days. Um, I think it has all the potential to be one of the best handbrakes on the market, if not the best. It has all the the hallmarks of it. I think people will be very, very happy with it. So hopefully that equips you with enough uh, to know whether you want to buy this thing or not. Um, the DS8X, I'm getting on very well with that. My long-term review is still in the works, um, but I'm using it in all sorts of configurations with different products as well, just to try and really see how it how it works how it can mount it and all that stuff so uh this is a really good combo i stream every tuesday and thursday at nine o'clock irish time so that's gmt at the moment do join me there i'll be using these on stream if i'm doing any rally or drifting rally every thursday so uh do join in for that you'll see me uh use this and you'll see it be you know uh, how reliable it is and how how well it performs for now i'm lawrence and i'll chat you later